Hey friends, welcome back. Now in this video, I'd like to explore a little bit more the various items which get created by our lake house. Because so far we have seen that when we create a lake house, we also get a SQL endpoint, which we already used with the external tools, but we also get a data set. In this case, it's a default data set because it gets created as soon as the lake house gets created. And that's why those three items also have the same name. Now let me just click on the data set in here and then you see that we got various options in here. So one of those, if I go to the right side here, is that I can select the table I want. So for instance, I could say, click on the Pokemon table here, and then I get a preview of the data itself. You can see here all the columns. I can of course scroll if I want to do that. And I can also export this data, as you can see here. So if you click here, you see that you can export it in various formats if you want to download it to your local uh, computer. You also have the option to create a paginated report from it if you want to do this. The same is true in here. There's also a little icon in here. And beside this, you can also, if I deselect this table here, select only specific columns. So you can see here are the columns and I can select, for instance, attack and generation and HP, for instance. So I can select individual columns in here and then I would see here the columns of the table. So that would also be possible. And then, of course, I can export only parts of the table if I want to do that or create a page and reports based on the data. So this is possible in here. So let me just deselect it for now and also point out one important thing. You see here we have three tables we can choose from. So the diabetes table, the orders table and the Pokemon table. Remember that in our fabric workspace, we also had files, not only tables. Now the files cannot be used here. You can see they don't appear. And that's why if you remember, why I said, or that's why I said that uh, we also want, we always want to convert our data uh, into table format. So the delta table can be used in various uh, transformations in here. The files itself is helpful for storing data, but you can't really do much with them. So that's why converting into delta tables, as we've seen, for instance, with the data flow gen two, or using a pipeline in order to get the data into delta tables is most often very helpful. Having said that, what else is there? Well, we can analyze the data in Excel. So if you're familiar with Power BI, uh, then there's also an analyze in Excel option, which allows you to download uh, the data and then have kind of uh, pivot tables in order to uh, slice and dice the data. So that's based on that. And also very interesting is here that we can visualize the data. So I can go in here, as you see, I can create a report if I want to do that. Or I can also, of course, do this up there. There's also an option to create a report. Now, regarding these options, there's a little drop down here. As you can see, you can click on this. And then there are actually three options. Again, there's page and report, which is the same as we've seen already. But then there's also the auto create option. And there's the start from scratch option. Now, of course, auto create allows you to automatically create a, a report, a data visualization. Click on auto create here and then see what Power BI is then creating here. So in this case, okay, I need to pre-select my data so I can go inside my orders table and then I say, I'd like to see, for instance, the category and show me from the, no, that was wrong. I don't want this and I don't want this. I want actually the, from the orders table, go in here one more time. I'd like to have my category in here. So select the category. I'd like to see the amounts and maybe I'd like to see here the sales numbers. And you can see that then something like this is created for us. So that's actually a report automatically created by simply selecting a few of those columns in here. So not specific uh, creating visualization of self is just automatically created for us. And the interesting thing here, of course, is also that we can modify this. So I can go in here, you can see this, this personalize this visual, which is also available or a feature in Power BI Desktop. In this case, if you upload it, um, but let's click on this and then I can specify here, for instance, a different chart type, or I can add different items to the Y axis, X axis. So I can completely customize this based on the automatically created report. So just to show this to you, if I say this should actually be, uh, let's say that I want to have this as a donut chart, click on a donut chart, and then you see that now I have a donut chart in here. So let me just close this for now. And you see that now I have simply adjusted that. And if I want to save this, I can simply go up here and say, yes, I like this report. I want to save it. Click on the save desk here, and then I can name it. So for instance, this is the auto report. I simply call it this way now and I store it in the Fabric Workspace, that's fine. I click on Save. 
and then I just need to wait a little bit and then this report gets saved in our Fabric workspace. And here we go, the report has been saved. So if I go back to my workspace here, so if I go to the, in this case, my Fabric workspace, if you click on this one here, now you also see there's an auto report, which has been created. And that's the same experience as if you have uploaded a report from the Power BI uh, desktop, the Power BI service, and also you know that there's a, a report in here, which you can then simply also, of course, open it in here if you want to see, take a look at it. And also, of course, if you want to do this, modify it. So go to edit here, and then you can modify the report itself. So that would also be possible. Beside this, let's go back to, in this case, our, uh, in this case, the Fabric Workspace. And if I go one more time to our data set here, of course, next to uh, auto create, I can of course also start from scratch, which you have seen. So if I say I want to create a report and I want to start from scratch, click on this one here. Then of course here the same way, same experience inside my browser. I can choose from the tables. In this case, as I said, they are not related. So it makes no sense to somehow um, put uh, different items from the different tables. So I stick to one table. In this case, uh, say I go with Pokemon. And then for instance, I could say I have here various types. And for those types, I would like to see this as, uh, let's say, a bar chart. And then I see, I like to see here the uh, attack in here. And I can see that they're the attacks. And of course I can customize this. I can go here to the format this visual. Then I can add, for instance, the data labels in here. Um, or I could also inside this, if I go back in here, you say currently it's the sum of the attack. And it doesn't make sense actually to sum up the attacks. Maybe I'd like to see this as what's the maximum for each of those types. Go to maximum here. Then you would see here the maximum attacks and so on, right? And of course, I can continue. I could see, I would like to see the same here for different other kinds of things. Like for instance, uh, is uh, what's the name of the Pokemon? So if I go in here and say, I want to see the name. And next to the name of the Pokemon, I would also like to see there, for instance, uh, let's say their attack points like that, right? And I have my table in here, which of course I can also further customize in here and do it the way I want. So um, you see that uh, you can do completely here, create your own reports uh, the way you want it, or you can use this automatically or the auto create report option, which is also available in here. And uh, otherwise, of course, you can also save this. So I can go to save here, click on a save disk, uh, just to save my report. And this is my, I'll simply call it now um, manual report. Of course, it's up to you. It's just an example in here. And yes, I want to save this to this workspace. Click on save. And then again, we wait, the report has been saved. And now if I go back to my Fabric workspace on here, then you would see that now we also have this manual report. So the second report, which has been created here inside the workspace and stored. And of course can also be at any time uh, be updated, changed and so on. So that's it, an introduction to how to create reports based on the default data set for the Fabric Lakehouse. Just to recap, remember that in the Lakehouse itself, we can store uh, delta tables as well as files and the report or the data set which gets created by creating the Lakehouse only contains the tables, so the delta tables. So we first need to convert the data and store it as delta tables and based on them, then we can create our Power BI report inside this Fabric workspace, either manually or automatically created for us. So that's it for this video. Hopefully that was helpful. Try it out yourself. If you got questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, best guys.